Earlier this year, you bought ad space on billboards in London, which feature a photo of you in a bra, your name, and the OnlyFans and Instagram logos. What made you get have this idea to advertise publicly? Yeah, so I think there was like a two two part thing to that. I think OnlyFans is now an established part of digital culture. If you've got a mobile phone, you probably know what OnlyFans is. You know, the the sort of like people kind of just turning a blind eye to it and pretending it doesn't exist was frustrating. As someone who operates a legitimate business, pays their taxes, employs people, you know, follows the law. Um, so it's a bit of a stirring of the pot. It's a bit of a statement. Um, but underneath that, you know, I do find based on what we've just talked about with addiction recovery and like, you know, I do find like the fact that it's still stigmatized and shamed quite concerning, um, you know, without like bumming out the whole podcast. Like I lost two friends last year to, uh, they, they took their own lives, um, in my industry and people really struggle with the isolation and the shame around it all. Um, Mm. Yeah, I know from sort of my experience in addiction that it's not the substance, it's like the shame, the secrecy, the stigma, you know, that's an ideal habitat for really bad mental well-being, right? So yeah. I suppose my billboards were a little a little nudge to maybe legitimise this a little bit because it is legit, you know? So mm-hmm. I guess there was a two two part reason, really. And Yeah, and I mean, you know, I think we can all – we all know that like it's mostly sex work on OnlyFans, but they also have, you know, people who don't do nudes, who do fitness training, who do cooking shows. So it's it's other things as well. So what was the response to your billboards? I think like, you know, shock and awe always make the news. So like the negative especially in England, your tabloids are out of fucking control. Oh, God. Like, There's nothing better than like a British tabloid. The shit that you guys put out there is I know. nuts. I know. <laughs> like if, if the headline has more than like three syllables in it, it's, it's, it's too highbrow anyway. So like, they don't even run it. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, like, um, yeah, the, the, the negative stuff got most <laughs> media attention, but actually I was really encouraged. Like the response on the whole was really positive from people like in the industry, but also outside the industry. Like my mum and dad were proud. My brothers watched Did the TV debates. That was kind of cool. Like, <laughs> and in general, people were, were pretty chill. It, it might just be because I, I associate myself with um, quite open-minded people, but I was actually pleasantly surprised. Yeah. So tell me about the negative response whenever there's someone doing something a bit different or someone challenging what's currently normal, especially if it's around sexuality and especially if you're a woman, like there's always going to be pushback, you know, I I did expect negative, uh, negative responses. Um, In my view, like any response is better than just pretending it doesn't exist. And so Mm -hmm. You know, I welcome that as well. It starts, it started a conversation and that's, that's exactly what I kind of wanted. Um, yeah, I think a lot of it actually was, I mean, not everybody, you know, some people's views are their views, but a lot of people, it was just lack of education on what OnlyFans actually was and, and what it isn't, you know? Um, a lot of people, when they, they learned that it was actually quite a safe place, you know, you can't just rock up and join OnlyFans. You have to be of a certain age, you have to, prove your ID, you have to have a credit card, all, the, all these things. It's kind of the same as walking into a like an off license, we say over here, and, and buying alcohol. You can't just do that. You like you, mm-hmm. there's certain things that you have to make sure you do first. Like you, you know, it's quite a protected place, you know. So mm-hmm. I think a lot of people kind of maybe change their mind a little bit after that, you know, after knowing that. So people made complaints to the Advertising Standards Authority in the UK. Um, what ended up being the ruling on that? Yeah, um, they, uh, you know, I, I'm glad. Like, I did actually quite heavily research the guidelines before I put the ads up. And um, they said they were fine. Yeah, so all good. Even in this country, we're, we're quite prudish over here. 
you don't often even see a bikini. So, yeah, I was quite happy. <laughs> so the, you were then interviewed on Piers Morgan Uncensored, a show that is a pretty conservative audience. Um, what was that like for you? Yeah, like, I can't lie and say I wasn't nervous. Um, especially like I was on a Zoom a bit like this. And um, while you're waiting to go on, you, you're watching the show live as it happened. And there was these guys, they were debating over something different, but there was this furious, like, shouting match going on between these guys. And I was thinking, oh, do I, do I have to bring that energy? Like, is mm-hmm. that what, you know, it's 10 p.m. Like, I should be in there. <laughs> like, so there's a bit of that. Um, but, you know, I was actually quite honoured to be on there. Like, I, I was honoured to be on there. I was honoured to be debating with the people that I was. And uh, it just, it, they did their job. The billboards, therefore, did their job. So, yeah. What was uh, Piers Morgan like, specifically? Did you find that he was neutral, or did he seem, like, kind of skewed one way or the other? He was actually away, which was interesting because his uh, his replacement was female. Um, it was a woman. Mm. She was kind of neutral. She was just facilitating the debate between me and me and another lady. Um, so it was definitely not a shouting match, which I was happy about. You know, that was yeah, that, was, <laughs> that made it made it easier. And actually, we had really like we had a really good conversation. You know, yeah. Now, the woman that you were debating kept saying that you were promoting pornography. Um, do you consider what you do to be pornography? Yeah, I do. Um, but kind of my argument is that, you know, whether I have little billboards up or not, I don't need to promote pornography. Like, I remember when I was doing this Piers Morgan thing, I had I was armed with stats just in case, you know. And um, I found a really interesting thing out, which was the the audience of Pornhub is bigger than the whole of the UK. Like so, and like a huge. It's like amount. it's like I this. Mean, it's like the sixth most visited website in the world. Yeah, and I, you know, like on par with Amazon and Google and Facebook. You know, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah I can imagine that. So, yeah, what I do is is pornography, um, but it, I don't think it's porn which is a menace to our society. I think it's how we're dealing with it which mm. is essentially at the moment we are not dealing with it. Not I'm talking mm. about my own culture. Like it's still this taboo thing that everybody engages with and nobody talks about. Like, mm. again, it's the same as alcohol, drugs, gambling. We've seen like time after time that it's not these things, but it's our sort of like demonization and criminalization of these things that make them really unhealthy. So yeah, I guess I, 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 I guess that's what I'd say to, to in response to um, people thinking it was a problem to promote a platform which has porn on it, you know? Hey guys, if you want to support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q&As, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.